Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to tackle the enemies of Rome, barbarians, wherever they may be found. So this basic sort of system will work whether you're painting Gauls, Celts, uh, Langobards, you know, wherever it is that the uh, shirtless masses <laughs> are out there, this will work pretty well for most of them. Really, the base and the shield transfer are going to do most of the heavy lifting for us when it comes to how the finished product looks. And when you've got a whole bunch of them lined up, it'll work perfectly. Now, all of the paints will be listed in the description, and because there are no uniforms here, really any colors will work. I'm just showing you how I did this particular fella. But without any further mucking around, let's get started. Now, to begin with, I've primed this fella with a couple of light passes, of barbarian flesh from the army painter. Uh, he's a barbarian, he's mostly flesh, it seems like a safe bet. <laughs> you don't have to push the boat out too far with that one. If you want to stick purely to Citadel products, what you might do is a primer of uh, the Wraithbone, and then give it a couple of coats of Cadian flesh tone by hand, but this is much quicker, so if you have got access to it, why not? Now what I've got is one of my Makeup brushes. These things are brilliant for dry brushing. Uh, the slightly softer bristles kind of help prevent you putting too much paint on. So I've loaded up my brush. I might have taken a little bit too much off there, to be honest, but let's take a quick look. And we'll get a feel for what we'll leave behind by brushing along the edge of his base there. You see, I'm not leaving very much at all. But what we'll do now is just dry brush Eldar flesh along his shoulders. I might need some more paint, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. All right, with a little bit more paint this time. There we go. Brushing across any areas of raised detail. You'll see we very quickly get some sort of pre-shading going on with this skin, which is gonna be important when we come to paint them later. Uh, with Barbarians, of course, you're gonna end up painting a fair few of these for you know, whatever game system you're playing, so Try not to lose yourself too much in the detail here. Now at this stage, he's gonna look a little bit chalky, but that's fine. We are gonna shade over him later, and with a varnish, he's gonna look pretty good. What I've got now is Corax White. And this paint, my goodness, you really wanna do add, so you really want to add rather, a couple of drops of Lamian Medium in there, and then find yourself some agitators, so little stainless steel ball bearings. Uh, just so that you can keep this stuff mixed. Um, it takes a fair bit of shaking. You know, this will separate and go kind of gloopy. But as you see, this stuff whew, covers pretty well when it's uh, behaving. So I do recommend those little extra bits of work. You know, pop in the agitators, just a little bit of Lamy and Medium, and you'll get nice crisp white with just a couple of coats. So after just two coats of that white, that's a pretty respectable finish. That's going to work just fine for what we've got in mind. Now I'm going to start with the lighter color, the white in this case, because it'll be easier to paint that over that light undercoat than it would be to try and paint white stripes. So I've got here a little bit of McCrag blue. And check this out. I've thinned this down just a little. What I'm going to do is paint a line down the front of his leg. Carefully. <laughs> and then we'll stop once we reach near to his knee. Then what you can do is flip him upside down. And from this direction, I generally find it easier to do the bottom half of the leg. You can start near his ankle and come up towards there. Now that's not a perfectly straight line. We don't need to worry too much about that. Let's go around now and I'm going to paint stripes on his bleeding trousers. Now, when you're painting the stripes on, my recommendation is to have your paint a little bit thinner than you normally would so that it'll flow easily off your brush. And you will need to come back and essentially paint those lines in twice. You know, you're going to need to give them two coats. Now, painting stripes is ironically something I'm not very good at. <laughs> so here I am telling you how to do it. Uh, if you do have a simpler recipe for getting stripes on trousers like this, I would love to see it in the comments. You know, being able to share that stuff would be really cool. Um, any little mistakes I've made now, I'm going back to my white. And I'm just going to 
straighten out these stripes in a few areas. Not worrying too much about areas where I have gone over onto his little shoes, because of course we're going to paint those a different colour. Now it's worth considering too that not everybody would be running around in striped trousers, so if you don't want to have to paint those, uh, something like yellow or a red can work really well in that place. So we'll move on now to some Steel Legion drab, and we're going to paint in his shoes and any other little leathery thong bits. So his belt, I'm going to switch on down to a smaller brush and paint that in too. You'll notice this does let a little of the uh, primer show through, so you will need to come back and give that two coats. Now while those are drying, we'll grab some Bane Blade Brown, and we're going to use this as a base coat for any of the wooden areas. So if your fellow's carrying, for example, a spear, you can paint the shaft in this. You'll notice that it is quite bright, but that's what we're looking for, because when we shade it, it's going to bring that down quite a bit. You might get a little bit of the primer still showing through. Take your time when you come close, like if I flip them around here, it's a little difficult to see behind a shield, but we do want to try and paint that bit. Just take your time when you come near his chest, and any visible spots, if you do splot them with, uh, you know, with this, you can touch up with a little bit of uh, Kislev flesh. Now the shields would likely have been covered with leather on one side, um, and that would mean that these edges would be painted in some colour. Now, you can do this after you apply the decals, but I would suggest you'll find it much easier, you know, if you're having a little whoops moments that run in, like that for example, um, you're not going to get it on the decal. So I'm going to use here, this is Warpstone Glow, and just a quick pass around, because uh, I've already chosen the decal that I'm going to put on this fella, and really any colour will work for this. Just pick something that complements the uh, shield design you're going to choose later. Now speaking of that shield, um, I remembered that the boss itself would have been metal, but these sort of supports along the sides, some of them would have been metal, uh, some others would sometimes have been wood. So I've gone back to my Baneblade Brown and painted that in wood. Now for the metal areas, I'm using Iron Hand Steel. This is kind of bright, and uh, when we shade it, we're not going to have to highlight it any if we don't want to. Now these little copper bracelets, um, I'm just going to use Retributor Armor for these. Uh, this is strictly speaking a gold color, but again once we shade it, it's going to be pretty much perfect. Um, you could if you wanted to use something slightly darker here, you know, if you were planning to highlight it up, then more power to you, but we're looking for ways that we can uh, save some time. And I think starting from a brighter color here, it's definitely going to be the way to save <laughs> save on these. Now speaking of his hair, this is really one of the final details that we're going to base coat. I've got Zandri Dust, and this is a wonderful color for blonde hair. And you're looking at it now, it's quite dark and drab, but I promise this will look the business when we're finished with it. Just remember, blonde isn't yellow. Now once all of those base coats are dried, give yourself some time to do a little bit of tidy up if you have any areas you need to touch up. Then give your Agrax Earthshade a good shake. It's important that you do make sure this is shaken up and really mixed in properly, otherwise it's not going to quite work properly. Now let's go ahead and just apply this over the whole model. Uh, you'll see I'm not being as generous with it as I ordinarily might. I want to be a little careful applying it so that it really does flow into, you know, muscles and what have you. And let's make sure we carry on around the front too. Now after about half an hour to dry, this is what you'll have. Still looks a little silly with the uh, shield the way that it is, but the actual miniature itself, yeah, it's not looking too bad. There are a couple of spots where I have missed with the Agrax Earthshade, but what we can do is just get a small brush and dot a little bit in there in a couple of minutes. What I want to do first though is get on to highlighting his hair. And for this I've got Ungor Flesh. Uh, there isn't really a correct answer for how you want to do hair. Uh, this is just one way that I like doing sort of light blondish hair. So if you take most of your paint off your brush, you can sort of scoot along sideways 
and pick out the high points on the hair due to the way it's sculpted. Now I've cut out the shield design that I want from the transfer sheet. Some companies will sell these separately, but the Warlord ones come with them in the box, which is quite nice. I've just laid this on a bit of toilet paper, and I'm going to go ahead and just douse it in water. Uh, keeping this on a damp background, I keep hitting my, hitting my camera there, <laughs> keeping this on a damp background means that if you've got you know, five or six lined up as you're batch painting a unit, you'll find it easier to keep them all wet and uh, soaking through ready to use. So we'll just keep tossing water on that until we start to see the transfer lift away. But while that's sitting there, we can actually apply a quick layer of microset to the area where our uh, decal is going to be applied. Now this takes just a couple of minutes to dry. And we do want a first layer which is dry and gives something sort of tacky for the uh, decal to stick to. Now you'll see after a couple of minutes that your decal starts to slide around on the wet paper a little. So what you want to do is douse that with plenty more water and grab your tweezers in order to start sliding this onto your miniature. Now this, as always, is easier when you haven't got a camera in front of you, so feel free to ditch that camera <laughs> if you're doing this at home. Uh, a little bit of water. You see we get the backing paper away. And now comes the fun part. While that's still wet, you can get underneath there, lift it up a bit, and we'll start aligning this a little better. Now once you've got that in the right position, uh, that'll take a little bit of fiddling, but it's worth the extra effort. I'm just applying a quick layer of microset over the top and just making sure that works its way into any recesses so that this is all going to set properly. We'll then leave that to dry in the sun for a little while. Now after about half an hour in the sun, this is what we've got. And you'll notice if I turn it to catch the light, that's actually very smooth now. Uh, the decals will shrink very slightly as they dry, but there are a couple of little imperfections, and for that we're going to use Micro Sol. Uh, this is a solvent, funnily enough, which will gently melt the, uh, the backing that this decal is on, allowing it to take an irregular shape. So if you have any little creases or what have you want to get rid of, just go on a little bit of Micro Sol, and same as, let that dry. Now while that is drying, if you want, you can grab yourself your base coats again and just pick out a couple of areas where you want slightly brighter finish. Now after a few quick lines of that, just to break up some of the grubbiness of those trousers, uh, for some colors you won't necessarily need to do that, but for really light ones like yellow or white, I'd say it is going to add quite a bit to the miniature. What I've got now is a little bit of Kislev flesh, and I'm just going to do the same along any edges, uh, particularly where the uh, dry brush at the beginning really caught. You can use it as a guide for just a little bit of this. It'll make some of those areas stand out a little bit more. And just add a bit more detail to his face. So cheekbones, nose and chin are always a good spot for this. Now, particularly if you've got a large number of these to paint, that is a stage which, you know, you might want to skip. Um, I do think, though, that if you've got the time or the gumption, it adds a little bit more and it really does help that skin pop. So what I'm going to do now is hit him with a varnish. I'm going to use Vallejo's matte varnish from a spray can. Any matte varnish will do the job here, of course. And then I'm going to base him to match whichever army it is he's going to join. So let's get a look. Once we've got the shine off of that shield there, what does the finished miniature look like? And there we have it, our Barbarian is complete. Now from here, of course, there's all sorts you could do. You could carry on highlighting his metal, his trousers, whatever you want. But I really think when you've got a good 80 or so of these blokes to paint for a force, you don't need to worry too much about the little stuff. What I would recommend is if you're looking at batch painting these guys, do them in groups of, say, six or 12, so that way you can paint, you know, Two guys with brown trousers, two guys with red, two guys with green, and then swap around some shirt colors so you're not having to worry about, you know, making every single one of them unique. Just use a few set colors, and when you mix them in across a whole force, they'll look fine.
Now at the moment, until the 24th of March, you're able to cruise to the Warlord Games online store and pick up a box of these guys or any of the basic infantry for SPQR. And they'll come with a free rulebook for the revised edition of the game, which seems pretty good to me. <laughs> free rule set? Okay. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing that one come out myself. Um, so that's been part of the reason behind getting into these guys, having some fun painting barbarians, you know, the enemies of Rome. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all the patrons who are keeping me ticking over in paint and glue, including producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Connor, and Fred. Your contributions are invaluable. So if you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.